Today we're gonna talk about an incident response case. IR stands for incident response. As we do from time to time, we analyze cyber incident response cases. Today's case will be about a PDF attachment. Okay, let's say it is opened by one of the users. So one of the users um, has opened an email and the email we are assuming that it contained a PDF attachment. Now, once the PDF attachment opened, what happened? We, let's say the computer went into full lockdown or let's say ransomware. We assume that there was a ransomware attack that hit the computer because it went fully encrypted. And when that happens, the user loses access to their computer. They are locked up and they cannot uh, use their PC. So when that happens, we say this is a ransomware attack. Okay, so what to do in this case? How we respond in such a scenario? We isolate the infected machine. Isolate, let's say, isolate the infected. We don't want any network access from this machine because it might not be a ransomware attack. It could be a worm attack. And when that happens, if the computer is, uh, stays connected to the network, there are chances that the worm would hit other computers on the network. So you want to isolate the infected machine. The next thing you want to do is to take a memory dump. memory dump that has all of the artifacts because if we don't analyze the artifacts we're not going to be able to see what happened so that's what we did in this case memory dump we took a memory dump of the machine now what was the objective the objective was to answer a couple of questions how did it happen how did the cyber attack happen how did the ransomware hit the uh, you know the PC or the user and then when did it happen we want timestamps and the last thing you want to know is what happened so what the malware or what the ransomware did after it infected the uh, PC so to answer all these questions we have to analyze a memory dump a memory dump is analyzed using various tools now most of the time we use uh, open source tools such as Volatility. Volatility is an open source framework built on Python. It can be used to analyze memory dump. Our objective here, which we said earlier to analyze it, to answer these questions, but after we uh, knew how the ransomware uh, infected the computer, we knew how it happened and when we can actually monitor or observe the timestamp and of the uh, email and then the last thing what to answer the what we have to extract the uh, culprit the culprit here is the PDF attachment okay now sometimes the campaign or the ransomware campaign may have been delivered to multiple users at one time and it happens that only one of the users has opened the PDF attachment. In that case, you can extract the PDF attachment from other emails where they uh, didn't open the attachment or they didn't download the PDF attachment. But for C, for, 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 to follow the procedure correctly, we're going to have to extract it from the memory dump to preserve the integrity of the artifacts. So in volatility, we have plugins that would help us accomplish this. Uh, objective so now let's switch to volatility and see what happens now for context the operating system is windows okay so we know beforehand what is the operating system we don't we don't need to uh, use the profile uh, argument to specify the operating system we know it beforehand now we can start analyzing automatically so vol dash f home And here, the case name. And then <clears throat> the first thing we want to do is to have a look at the process list. 
Now remember, we are using volatility three. So the usage of plugin slightly differs from volatility two. And I have talked a lot about the differences between the two in previous videos where I discussed the use of volatility in memory forensics. <coughs> and then we're going to use ps or windows dot ps list. Let's have a look at the processes. At the time of the infection, I expect to see um, Adobe Acrobat, uh, Adobe Reader here in the process list because it is a PDF document and usually PDF documents are handled or opened by Adobe Reader. But I cannot see it here. I see system processes and if we scroll down, we see the Explorer scrolling down we see thunderbird which is an indication th that indeed the uh, infection was delivered through an email because thunderbird is an email client much like outlook and then we have powershell and connection host. that is the first indication of the malware presence the powershell execution and the con host the command host so probably when the uh, user opened the email attachment downloaded the pdf file and opened it what happened the pdf file called powershell and powershell executed system commands we want to find out what are these commands and what's the exact powershell command that was used the next thing we want to do is to uh, have a look at the files to extract the PDF file, we want to use the file scan plugin. So windows.file scan. Here we can see all of the files on the operating system. We don't want that, but just we, for the case of simplicity, we just run file scan to see the output. And then we cultivate the uh, command to give us more meaningful uh, output. So basically here we're going to use the same command and then we use grep dash i so what are we gripping we want to grip pdf files because we know it was a pdf file so dot pdf and here we have two files resume and they were shortcut files so now we have to extract these files to extract these files we have to uh, use File, not file scan, there was a, a command or a plugin. I just forgot the plugin name. Let me check. I can check, check it out here. So this is memory forensics. Searching and dumping files. So we're going to use file search. We used file search. We're going to use this command to dump windows, then dump files. Okay, we're gonna copy this. So the output here, the output directory is a directory where the file will be dumped. I'm gonna specify this as home. And this directory needs to be created before executing this command, or you will get an error that no such file or directory. And then we use the, we use the plugin Windows dump files dash dash physical address. We're going to specify the physical address of the file. From the output of the previous command, we can see that the physical address is here. We're going to copy this, highlight. Okay, now we switch to do the output. See the output. And we have the file. So the file we want to analyze is this. Okay, this is the same file but with .dat extension. So we're going to analyze this file. Now a PDF file, a malicious PDF file, it's very recommended first to analyze it using online the available online sandboxes so first i started with any run so see here this is the playthrough 
this is the file as you can see I opened it and when the PDF file was opened the, as, as you saw earlier there was a command prompt opened for like uh, two seconds and then nothing happened it's supposed to be a video file that uh, brings up Adobe Reader right but as you can see I opened it again and again I see PowerShell executed and after that the Windows command host and then nothing happened so that was it now we get to see the breakdown of the processes so anyone has classified this as malicious activity and if you take a closer look I analyzed the file on Windows 11 operating system with Windows Defender disabled and here on the left on the right I can see the breakdown of the processes so we see first PowerShell as the parent process and then we can see the command host now if we take a look at the PowerShell process and then we click on more info we can see more detailed uh, breakdown of what the process does so this is the path of the process which happens to be PowerShell and we, we can see here the dangers so according to uh, the MITRE framework there were two tactics often used by attackers implemented by this process the first one is bypass execution policy to execute commands and then PowerShell with invisible window and indeed when this was first run we saw only the command prompt but we didn't see the actual PowerShell window that would confirm yes that was a PowerShell so as you can see when I opened the file there was no PowerShell only command prompt so the PowerShell window was hidden that's the reason back here so these two techniques uh, are actually frequently used by malicious actors that's why they were classified as dangerous and we have two warnings and that's because base64 was used to encode the command and that's indeed suspicious because usually when you want to accomplish a specific task using PowerShell you would have no problem right um, typing the PowerShell command in ASCII format but if you paste 64 it without the need to do so, this would raise a red flag. So the use of a PowerShell in the command along with this. If we copy the command now, let's copy this and we go to CyberShell. So we copy the paste 64 part. And that's the plain text output. We see it is checking on a file if it does exist and it then uh, contacts an unknown address as you can see the use of IEX which indicates that the PowerShell is trying to uh, contact a command and control server specific, uh, which, whose value is stored under this variable and yeah that's the analysis of, that's the main command executed by the PDF file now going back here we see the command host we can take a look at this so the con host there is no verdict on this file but we can on the events tab we can take a look at the actions performed by the process so now to the HTTP request we saw we don't see any we don't see any suspicious HTTP requests they are all made to regular um, addresses and then the connections no suspicious connection and DNS requests again they are all regular and we have one threat you might be saying this is far from being a ransomware attack and that's true because we will not be able to simulate a fully ransomware attack on uh, this machine or on my machine because it's going to encrypt everything right it's not feasible um, what we did we just stripped off the uh, encryption algorithms so that we will be able to analyze uh, the main indicators of compromise and analyze the main actually drive behind this file so the main drive was the use of PowerShell the PowerShell command here originally it, uh, it fully looks like this so we're gonna copy this again and go back that's the full PowerShell command and after this part which we encoded 
it actually <coughs> retrieves the ransomware whose address or the command control address controlling the ransomware is stored as a value under this parameter. To get a report of the findings, we can actually use, <coughs> again, Anirun, and by clicking on Get Sample, we get the full report. The next thing I did was to analyze the file using ransom or using virus total. As you can see, we have 25 hits of 61. And most of the hits or most of the antivirus security solutions stating that it is a Trojan downloader. And indeed, it is a downloader. It retrieves the actual ransomware that we talked about earlier in the video. And we see there are rules that were triggered because of this file. If we go to uh, behavior, we see the same um, output that we saw with Anuron report. And if you go to community, we can see the references about the other detections. So the other rule that triggered, that was triggered in this case was the uh, Tor ABT scanner, advanced persistent threat scanner. That's the reference and the description detects suspicious abbreviated forms of command line arguments used when executing partial commands. Okay. So that was it.